Sarah Hayward is Executive Director of Strategy and Improvement at, uh, Improvement at Slow Council. She joins us on the daily. Sarah, great to have your expertise on all of this. And um, look, I, I suppose the easiest place to start with is, I mean, how concerned, from your experience, should people in Birmingham be about the fact that the council has, has essentially admitted bankruptcy? Is that the end of provision of local government in Birmingham? Uh, no, it's not. And in fact, the Section 114 process is designed specifically to protect those essential services that protect residents. So adult social care, children's social care, collecting the bins, they will all continue and will all be permitted spending under the Section 114 notice. So residents shouldn't worry about that. D tell me then a little bit about the situation in, in Slough when you arrived, because, of course, as I remember, there was what, approximately a, a bit of a £100 million black hole, not, not, the, same, not, not the same as the... Uh, the extent of the exposure in, in Birmingham, but a pretty large hole in the public finances. Uh, yeah, so there was a significant hole. I, I actually arrived in Slough after the Section 114 had been um, issued, um, and I'm part of a new leadership team um, working on the, the recovery. Um, when you look at Slough and look at some of the other councils that have issued 114s, um, we're in a bit of a different position to Birmingham, actually. So at a headline level, what's led to it is overextension on capital projects and, and poor governance what, of those uh, what, capital what, projects. What does that mean, capital projects, for, for, our, for our listeners? So, yeah, so it means um, uh, it means things... So in Slough, we invested in a lot of property on the basis of making a return on that property and those re in different ways. And, and in the end, um, that return, those returns didn't materialise. Um, in Thurrock, it was investing in particular businesses that they thought were going to generate income for them. In Croydon, it, similarly, it was investing, I I investing in property. Um, um, and there's reasons why councils decided to go down that route, and what's at the heart of all of those all of those councils is really making bad decisions about those investments because the governance wasn't good enough to support that decision making. Mm -hmm. So what then did you do? I mean, the, 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 there must be a precious few options on the table for you, uh, bar you know selling stuff off, borrowing money, finding efficiencies. So in Slough, we are selling off our assets and we're using some of those receipts to plug holes in the budget while we make cuts to services to actually balance our budget. So we are um, thinking about things like reducing frontline services where they're non-life and limb uh, services. And there are going to be some tough decisions um, in doing that to to get the council to get the council's budget back down to what we can afford to spend, and those decisions are, are taking place in the other councils that have issued one one four as well. When we've right sized ourselves, and this is a multi year program, um, when we've right sized ourselves, we'll then be able to look at what the priorities are um, and, and potentially build back up. But that is a long way off for for the residents of Slough, sadly. Just from what you're saying, Sarah, any time. A local authority, a piece of local government finds itself in these circumstances. Can we trace everything back to poor governance, to decisions that were taken by elected representatives or indeed senior people within the, 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 the local government machinery itself? So I think it would be quite sweeping to say everything. Um, certainly the um, the investment in property that, that Slough made was poorly done, but that also masked a whole load of other um, uh, deficiencies in the local authority. I would say the backdrop for the sector for 15 years, really since the crash at the end of the, uh, of the 2000s, has been really challenging. We're not the part of the public sector that attracts most protection from spending. And at at the same time, demand for social care in particular, but other services as well, has escalated. In simple terms then, are we seeing local government looking for other revenue streams, other ways of making money to make up significant shortfalls in that which they're getting from, from central government or indeed from the local tax state? So lots of local authorities over the last 15 years have sought different ways of, of generating income. And actually, there have been some really successful examples, as well as the, the poorer examples like Slough that have, have hit the news. Um, uh, Councils do make income off of normal day-to-day -day activity um, as well. And actually, some of the more innovative income-generating schemes, like these property deals, like the um, investments that, that Thurrock and Croydon made, need to be very well governed because they're not in the core business. And so actually, where, where some of the issues are is whether council, councils are getting in the right 
specialist expertise to manage the new income generating activity that they're that they're trying to develop and that's been a big problem um, in some of the councils as well but even with the, the reduction in budgets that the, the councils have seen up and down the country uh, you know, you're, we're still talking about fairly significant amounts of money particularly yeah. when you add on top the other ways in which councils yeah. and authorities can can raise their cash so i'm just wondering i mean are local councillors the best people to be in charge of this stuff um, well, I, I've dedicated my career to local government and I, I believe in local democracy and decisions being made as close to residents as possible. Um, and in my experience, local councillors tend to be really dedicated to the job. Um, I do think sometimes um, uh, sometimes there are issues about people understanding the level of responsibility um, that they've got. But as officers, we have to work with members to make sure that they understand their role and their information that's being presented to them. Um, and I think whether it's local or national, having politicians that are elected from the populace to be representative is the right way to go about decision making. We're in a situation right now where, of course, I mean, I, you, you find any part of the public sector that hasn't got its hand outstretched, you know, looking for more money right now. And, I'll, and, and I'd be very, very surprised. But, but genuinely, these problems that we have seen, and Birmingham is by no means the only place, as, as, your, own, right. as, as your own experience has shown us, there will be more of them. I mean, ultimately, could most of these problems have been avoided if, for the last few years, we had seen the real terms increase in local authority budgets uh, that, that local authority leaders have been calling for? So I think it's arguable that some of the capital projects that have happened and, and gone wrong might not have been um, so attractive had there been more money in the budgets. But that doesn't belie the fact that certainly in, in Slough's case and Croydon, where I was before I came here, had some systemic problems that meant that um, they didn't make these decisions well and actually they backfired. And the fact that they backfired was predictable had there been good good decision making and good information supplied to to members so i do think that's only one part of the one part of the story um undoubtedly local government budgets are stretched um undoubtedly they've been stretched really for 15 years um and i don't think you'll find anyone officer or elected councillor in local government that wouldn't argue um uh, for for more money um but i do think that what you're seeing at the moment certainly is problems that should have been um, spotted and avoided in local government. Um, and that's why we are where we are trying to fix Slough for the people of Slough.